Well, today on Nation, a window cleaners podcast, we're talking all about what I love and what I hate about the industry. So if you've been in the industry for any period of time, hopefully you enjoy this uh, episode and tell me what you think uh, are true and what you also love. Either way, stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What is up? If it's your first time here, have a look around. We've been doing this for seven years. You got tons of content, hundreds of episodes, hundreds of hours to listen back to. But either way, I appreciate you being here. And if it's not your first time here and you're just like an OG, then what's up? Thank you for hanging out. Um, As you know, most of the time we do kind of um, professional kind of topics but today i'm not going to because uh i figured it'd be fun to do a love and hate we do one of these like every year kind of and uh it's uh, changes as the uh years go on uh for sure and there's a lot to like about the industry i mean there's more things than i could have absolutely list as far as an overall it's a 99.9 percent awesome awesome industry the little things that uh I'm not a fan of, uh, you know, those kind of come into play. And maybe it's the same for you. Maybe you have the same idea or you have better ideas than I do. But, you know, either way, I want to talk about it. And don't let me talk you out of it. If you're new to window cleaning, um, listen to things that we're talking about. Because they're not that serious, really. Like, overall, it's an amazing industry. Which is crazy. Because who would have thought? Who would have thought that this was that, you know, amazing of an industry uh, before you get in? But it is. It is. The people are awesome and some of the best friends I've ever had, IRL, in real life, uh, come from the industry. I love the industry. I love the camaraderie. There's nothing else like it. With that being said, let's jump into the things I don't like and like about the industry. And the first thing is the camaraderie. It is literally... Uh, genuinely good people. Yes, there's trolls. If you're on Facebook, you've seen that. People love to watch the world burn. Some people are not trolls, and they're just that um, inept sometimes when it comes to business. But for the overall point, when you meet people in real life, it's fantastic. We're such a subculture of an industry that when you meet another window cleaner, it's this weird instant like connection that you have with people. And it sounds so corny, I know, I know, but if you've not gone to a um, uh, a conference or a trade show or any of that, you don't quite know. And if you have and you didn't hang out with anybody, then you kind of didn't do it right. But the people are amazing. There's no other industry that I think is as tight-knit as this one, you know, as far as, you know, people wanting to help each other genuinely, which is pretty amazing. And most people don't want to do that. In a lot of industries, they're kind of hiding it like it's some kind of weird trade secret. But not here. No, no, not here. Um, So I really do love the camaraderie. Um, It's it's amazing. I'm guessing a lot of your real friends have come from the industry too, which is pretty awesome. And uh, as far as hates go, I have to start off hard. (laughs) For the Northerners. Southerners, you know, you guys... Yeah, you have to deal with, you know, extremely hot temps and bugs if you're in Florida and, uh, well, just Florida if you're in Florida. But um, but the northerners have to deal with something called storm windows. And if you don't know what a storm window is, a triple track storm is like 1,000 panes of glass put all together in a sandwich that you have to take apart without breaking, cleaning it, putting it back without fingerprints. And uh, usually they're embedded in aluminum frames, which do not slide, don't work. Um, so many problems with them. A triple track storm is really, so like a double hung triple track would be four individual panes. So you have four panes of glass for every one window set and you have to take it apart. And it comes out in stages. So you have to do the ins and the outs and the ins and the outs to kind of take it all apart. You have to go inside to remove the panes so you can get to the outside window to clean it. They're a, a pain, no pun intended, in the butt. And uh, yes, you charge quite a bit for them. That could be like 40 
50 bucks a set uh, for one window, but um, is it worth it? That's what I ask you Northerners, is it worth it? I hate storms. I do storms, uh, I don't like it. I know that storms are gonna be tricky for people. They don't wanna do it, so we get a lot of those ones. And I know the money is there, but man, there's so much easier money to make. Like one, one thing in, in business in general is that every dollar is the same dollar. Like the same value to every dollar, but some dollars you make way easier than others. You know, it's like if you do a, um, you know, somebody threw dog turds at the window and you had to clean it versus, you know, some job you're doing every week. Those are big differences, right? You're still making the same dollar, but there's big differences in what you have to do. And that's storms. I uh, hate storms. My fingers hurt just knowing I have to get in all those corners. And then the frames don't actually stick out. They're like, they're so bad. But... Back in the day, there was uh, some attachment things called a, uh, uh, I just said on the tip of my tongue, storm easel, but um, anyway, storm things. They were like easels for um, storm windows, and they made it easier, but then they stopped being around because people aren't putting storm windows in, so they're getting less and less and less, and it's like louvers. If you're in Hawaii, you know what louvers are. Uh, we don't really have them in the U.S. too terribly much, but those are individual panes of glass that all fold up like this, you know, to open the window. And uh, those are a huge pain in the butt, too. On the same line as storms. More people have storms, though, so I bring up storms. Yeah. And if you're watching to rate what these are for you, if a storm is your number one hate or um, hate's a strong word, dislike, we'll say. Because they're not bad. Again, if you're like new to the industry, they're not terrible. They're just not fun. Does that make sense? I think so. Anyway, um, that's the first one for my dislikes for sure. For sure. Uh, but another thing that I really do like about the industry is that the industry is a luxury industry, which I have to explain what that really kind of means. It means that we get to charge people to do something that they want to do now they want to have it done it's a luxury service no one dies if you don't clean their windows no one uh you know explodes nothing so we're a luxury business i mean we are as much as this every time i say it somebody's got to comment and tell me how wrong i am which is cool definitely tell me i'm just some idiot that sits in front of a computer screen but but the big thing is, is that uh, we're a luxury service. So we get to charge luxury prices and people want us or they don't. It's really nice when you talk about that because there's some things like um, uh, moral dilemmas, you know, where somebody is, you know, um, uh, a little old lady who can't keep up with her yard anymore and the city's trying to find her and you're there to cut the grass and you're like, man... She's like fixed income. That's why she can't do this. She's like, oh my God. You know, you have kind of that idea where they're going to find the cheapest one because they have to. It doesn't matter. Um, it's not something they're happy about spending anyway, right? When it comes to window cleaning, people are happy. Yeah, like route should get it done. But again, your business doesn't close if you don't have your windows cleaned. Even in restaurants, you'll get ticked, you know, like marked down for your uh, health inspections, but they're not going to just close the place down because of dirty windows. So when it all comes back to it is that we're a luxury business, that changes everything. That changes that people want to hire us and people are excited when we're done. Think about this. When you're done, people are always happy. They're like, oh my gosh, this looks so amazing. Thank you. Oh, great. Oh, thank you. Oh, it looks so good. That's what's said all the time. That's why the dentist clothes, by the way, works amazingly. Because when they say that at the end, when you're like, okay, thanks a lot. Well, and uh, did you want it for the next three months? Or did you want to have it done again in six months? Six months puts you to September 2nd. And that would be a morning appointment if that works. Like there are, so, oh my gosh, yes, absolutely. This is, uh, yeah, this is, they're so happy that you're going to make them happy again. And they're so happy right now. Every day it weans less and less and less, but the exact moment it's done, they're happy. It's like Christmas lights. Christmas lights, the only reason somebody puts that up is to bring joy to people. So you always have a happier customer. Always. 
Because they're not like, oh, I have to do this. I'm going to be mad. They're always happier, which is great, which is great. And I think a lot of times people kind of take that for granted. But being a luxury business changes everything in how it's done, how you bid, how you charge, how you discount if you do any discounts, if you do packages, if you do, you know, any of that stuff. It all comes back to that we are a luxury business. So there's a lot of pros to that, a lot of pros. And um, not really any cons to being a luxury. If you can think of some, let me know for sure. But I talked about the dentist clothes for sure being amazing. But for most of us, one of the downsides or things that we very much dislike is the lack of frequency. And until you implement the dentist clothes, which I call it the dentist clothes only because it makes your brain understand like, oh yeah, like you do that at the dentist all the time and no one complains. Like there's such a hard line that people are like, I'm, I can't have them book again six months. Our average is like every two. Yeah, you wait for them to call you back. It's going to be two years for most of them. Tell me I'm wrong. And the windows are going to be super dirty. And they noticed it because the windows are so dirty. But it makes people happy. Why not do them every six months? Who says you can't get them done every six months? We do houses monthly. Some people want them done monthly. I have one lady that does it every three weeks to coincide with her husband's travel. He travels every third week. So she, anyway. He comes back and the windows are done. But who tells them that that's not something you can do? Absolutely. You want to do it daily? I'll be here. Right? The lack of frequency sucks. Unless you take control of it and make it not suck. Like all these things that you dislike, you can mitigate all of those. You can change them. You can make them a, a pro. You can fix them. You can, you can do all of that stuff. All of that. Which is pretty awesome, right? If you know it's a problem, fix the problem. It's not a problem. If frequency is a problem and you very much dislike it, start the dentist close. Every customer gets put into rotation like that. And even if you book 90% of them and 10% are like, no, no, I don't want it again. Okay, keep following up with those ones. But 90% retention, where you're doing it, that's a business. That's a business and the frequency is there. If you do a $500 window cleaning twice a year that's a thousand dollars for 10 years that's a ten thousand dollar gig it's crazy one job comes in it's a ten thousand dollar window cleaning over 10 years think about that okay if you get 20 calls in a day in 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 um 10 years how much does that equate right if your average ticket whatever it is the frequency is huge. People sometimes don't really uh, understand the frequency side of things. But let me let me tell you. So say your average ticket is, we'll say 300. Just because that's a little bit uh, closer, a little bit low, I think, probably for average tickets. But we'll just say 300. Now, if you have each person do it twice a year at $600 a year for each job. And say you book 20 jobs, right? 20 jobs at your average ticket over 10 years, only 20 jobs. That could be a good day of bids, maybe two days. Maybe you could get that done before lunch, depending on how busy you are. But only 20 jobs at your minimum over 10 years is $120,000. That's where frequency comes in. You're not booking, you know, $300 job. You're booking $120,000 every 20 customers. And that's over 10 years, okay? You got more, more people, more customers, more repeat, more whatever, and all of a sudden. So you can take advantage of that and turn it around, flip it around and make a billion dollars, hypothetically. It's crazy, right? So when something sucks, you can definitely kind of change it into something that doesn't. Speaking of sucking, it's a terrible segue. I don't want you to have a sucky experience when ordering your supplies. Shameless plug, I am a rep for windowcleaner.com. It's what I do for a living. I place orders. I help people. It's fantastic. I love it. And I want to be your rep. I want to put your orders in. All you have to do is just text me. Uh, by the way, you know the colorful buttons when you go to check out? Right above that, underline says, save this card. Just click that. 
It'll say, hey, when you're logged in, it'll say, hey, Jersey, you saved this cart. All you do is text me then. Be like, yo, my Jersey, everything's in my cart. I'll verify your address. We could save cards, run it, done. So easy, it costs you nothing extra. Zero out of pocket extra for you. Not only can I check fitment, but I get credit for it and I can continue living. And you want me to live, don't you? Uh, oh, that was bad. But anyway, uh, do that. I am ever uh, grateful to everybody who does uh, let me put their orders in. Um, there are people who I put every order in for years. It's fantastic. It really genuinely makes me happy that so many of you uh, can go out of your way to help me. It's it's amazing. So let me put your order in. 862-312-2026 is my cell phone. And uh, what are you doing if you don't have a subscription to the American Window Cleaner magazine? You're just not a window cleaner. I'll say it. You are not a top tier cool kid if you don't have the magazine. It's literally $69. It's less than an hour of work. Uh, less than an hour of work for you to have an entire year. Uh, go to awcmag.com, get the subscription. It is a window cleaning only magazine made for us, by us. And there's amazing pictures, articles, stickers, it, everything. It's just great. Uh, American Window Cleaner magazine. Get a subscription. It's literally, just go get it. Just do it. Uh, by the way, I also see when you put a subscription in because I own the magazine. And uh, I just want to say thank you. Okay. Shameless plug. All, all done. I have to do that. The shameless plugs do work. If you've been watching this for a while, you know at the halfway mark, I do a shameless plug every single week. And I'm telling you, once a week, somebody's like, you know, I've been watching or listening to the show for a long time. Finally, the shameless plug. You got me. Let's do it. Yes. It's fantastic. I know uh, it's annoying, but man, it's great. I like to live. I like to be able to eat and feed my family. So I'm kind of impartial to putting orders in. But anyway, okay, great. Uh, another thing that um, I really, really like about the industry is the money. Now, we talked about kind of the freedom, right? So there's money and freedom, and both of them are phenomenal. Both of them are huge. A lot of times we get into the industry for the freedom. A lot of us, we have a ton of firefighters, we have a ton of JWs. We have a ton of people who have other things they have to do in blocks and they can schedule things. And the freedom side is fantastic. But the money side is as good as the freedom. But here's the thing. In essence and on paper and if you read the four-hour work week, it can happen. You can have money and freedom. Work two days, you make enough money to live, right? But what ends up happening is you go, well, I made what I made in my job. Uh, I make that in less than two days. So I could either relax for three days or I could maybe add another day on. Now you're working three and you're like, well, if I could do it. And all of a sudden now you're working more than ever. So the double-edged sword with money and freedom is that as one expands the other diminishes the more freedom if you're like man i want to have a six day weekend every week that means you work one day there's only so much you can make on that one day so you make less money but more freedom you're like all right i don't want to work fridays cool but now you're making a lot more money you have less freedom you only get one day off and if you're like yeah that's cool Keep it that way. Keep it that way. It's fantastic. But if you're like, you know, I think I should probably um, do more because I would make more and let's do Fridays and bring it on. I mean, I got the weekends and then all of a sudden all your free time diminishes and you're right back to it. So money and freedom are both fantastic, but you don't get both of them for very long because something in your head stops that. And uh, tell me how many days a week you work, by the way. Most of us would work five, but I know people who do like four 10-hour days, which is awesome. They always have every Friday off. They could fill it if they need to. You know, you got a little pocket, but you got a three-day weekend. You're still working the same hours. It's pretty fantastic. I know people that are running two shifts even. So pretty, pretty crazy on kind of what you can do and what you can add and everything else. But money and freedom, both are awesome, but both hinge on each other. And... 
One of the things that can really kill that is cancellations. For me, that is probably in the very top of the things I very much dislike. Now, disclaimer on all of the cancellations, I have a seven day rain guarantee and I hope you should too, absolutely. But I have a seven day rain guarantee, not because rain dirties the windows, because it doesn't. People go, yes, it does, it makes spots. No, that was the dirt uniformly on the window and as the rain hits it, it concentrates the dirt and then as it evaporates, it gets into little droplets, which is more concentrated dirt and now it looks like spots. That's not the dirt or it's not the rain that's dirty, it's the dirt that was on the windows. That's why you see spotting after like longer drought periods, right? It's not the rain. But the seven day rain guarantee, that's for people. That's for me. That is for people to, when they call and go, well, hey, I got an appointment coming up on Tuesday and it looks like we're supposed to get some weather. So I want to reschedule. That's going to screw me up. I can't reschedule. I can't push somebody else and make it with my floor board maybe, but I I don't want to reschedule. I have the schedule down. Well, don't worry about that. We have a seven-day rain guarantee, and if the rain dirties any of your windows, we will come back and make them look beautiful. Oh, all right. Well, let's do it. Yeah, sometimes people still want to cancel or reschedule. Put them on the end. I'm not going to bust my hump. Sorry, okay, cool. We're, we're eight weeks out. If you're going to reschedule, it's going to take that long. You okay with that? Like, I'm fine with that because they're rescheduling on me. I don't like reschedules. Now people go, well, what if you did like a down payment or whatever, you know, uh, um, and then, you know, if they cancel, no one's doing that. If you're, if you're taking a hundred dollars and then they, they reschedule, you're just going to keep their hundred dollars. You lost the customer. You got yourself a hundred dollars real good. And that customer will never use you again. Like, I don't understand that. So it's just a downside. It's just a part that I very much dislike cancellations because it screws your schedule up. Now they go both ways. If it's just storming like crazy the day of, and I had people on, I got to call them and say, Hey, I'm sorry. You know, it's just too bad for us to be out there. I do have to reschedule you. I reschedule you. I'm going to put you in the first available appointment that I can. Still screws up your day. How many times have we been sitting there and it's just downpouring and you're like sitting, waiting, 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 nothing still raining and you just lost a whole day of production now i'll tell you a trick other than the float board go back i've done videos on it hundreds of times but one thing is is that we do two starts on rain days we do a uh, eight start and a 12 start so what that is is that before eight and depending we usually would go by like seven usually in the morning because one of my guys had to drive like 45 minutes so i knew it was early enough but if it was raining, he would text me or whatever, and we would either call it for the first batch. If it's raining so hard, we'll call it. We're not going to stop the whole day because you know it rains for like a couple minutes and all of a sudden it's back. So like if it looks like it's going to do that, we'll have them come in anyway and do a late start. If not, then we have other ones start at 12. So if the rain stops by 10, things are drying up, then all the afternoon appointments we can still do, right? I don't want to lose a whole day. You can't get the day back. So I want to do enough to kind of keep it there, but cancellations suck regardless. Just do everything you can to make them not happen and you'll be absolutely more happy. And another big love that I love, if you are newer in the industry or even experienced, you've been doing this for a very long time, here's something that's really interesting is the cost of uh, entry is so low that you can get into it extremely cheap. You can upgrade equipment extremely cheap. You can buy the best-selling water fit package we've ever had for $2,800. Like, that is not anywhere else. You can't be a mechanic and buy wrenches for that. You can't do a lot of jobs and have that as your startup. And that's a water fit. We, I have a starter in traditional. It's 500 bucks. For $500, you can get everything you need, scrubbers, squeegees, belts, holsters, all that stuff. Like, the cost of entry being so low allows you to improve your equipment super easy, super often if you want. You can always be getting better stuff, newer stuff, finding out what you like. You can do all that because the cost of entry is so low. A lot of industries don't do that. I know people who are like mechanics and it's like, oh, you want a new frame machine? It's like $38,000. Like, I don't think we have anything with $38,000. I mean, you could buy a truck for your company for that, right? But there's other companies that that's just part of it, right? It's just part of it. We don't have that. And I really like that. But the last hate that I have is our cost of entry is so low. 
Now, yeah, I know. You're like, wow, that was kind of a lazy segue that you would have one for a like and then have the exact same one for a dislike. But hear me out. When you have, when you have a low cost of entry, that means that anybody can get into business. Now, no, not everybody can stay in business because you got to actually know business to do that. Okay. Real truth. You got to, you got to be able to run the business. You have to be able to do that. And I understand that part, but the low cost of entry means that anybody and anybody who wants to can get in for a couple hundred bucks. And that means that you're competing initially against people who are just not at all doing what you're doing. They're coming in, they're trying to make beer money. It's fine. It's whatever. But now you have all these other companies kind of coming in and it tends to wear on you when you see new people. Every time I get it, you know, people have even blamed me for this. I get one guy who just uh, always wants to tell me how it's my fault, uh, which is cool. Do that, whatever. But it's not my fault. If the new guys are ruining what you're doing, it's your fault. You don't have enough reason why they should hire you. Like a new guy. Oh, we see new guys all the time. There's so many new people. Yeah, because there's so many people that don't cut it. It's so cheap that you could be a window cleaner with a couple signs and $500 worth of gear. Less than that even. So a lot of people join, not a lot of people make it happen. So it tends to wear on you when you're like, oh, there's so many new companies. Yes, but they're not really there. They're not your competition, right? Ruth's Chris, which is a steakhouse, high-end steakhouse. You may have them buy you or pick any steakhouse. Their competition is not McDonald's, even though they both sell cheeseburgers. It's just not. If you want a McDonald's cheeseburger, you get it. You're not going there for the ambiance. You're not going there for the quality. You're not going there for, oh my gosh, the best cheeseburger in the world. You're not. It's different things. That's what you are. You're a luxury. They're not. They're making beer money. You're not. There's so much that you can bring to the table that isn't them. But yet sometimes a lot of you uh, or a lot of us just in general let that almost ruin their day because there's so many new people and then they start thinking well this is why i don't have business instead of going hey here's the problem how do i fix the problem it's not a problem a problem is only a problem when it's undecided there's no decision it's not a problem once you go oh, yeah i can do this then right find out why they should hire you over the other one i don't care if they're cheaper i don't care if they're whatever i want to know why to hire you when the value is there it doesn't matter you're not chasing people but it's tricky. It's tricky to have the um, back of your head always be reminded about the um, new people that are there and the amount of new people. But don't let it get to you. It really just genuinely isn't uh, isn't an issue. Remember, there's only one of you. You have to figure out what makes you you. That's the most important question in business by far is what makes me want or need to buy from you. There's 10 of you standing in a row. Look to your left, window cleaners. Look to your right, window cleaners. If none of you can say price, or heck, you're all $200, it would be an impossible decision for somebody to make because they don't have enough info other than price on who to just choose. So now you tell them why it's you. If the one guy goes, oh, it's because they clean good windows, and then you come in and you're like, I have a seven-day rain guarantee, 100% satisfaction guarantee. We're fully insured. We've been doing this. Our training program. Blah, 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 blah. If you can tell them why you're awesome, you get it. So the cost of entry and the new people does not matter if you can focus on the why, the why of you. Why of you? That's not a song, but it could be. Anyway. That's it. I hope you liked my uh, mild rants on some of this. I want to hear your answers. Please tell me what your thoughts are, what you love, what you hate. Or if you don't hate anything, uh, good on you. Uh, what do you dislike? Or what do you like least? If you're new in the industry, maybe you don't have them yet. If you've been in the industry for 20 years, you probably got a couple. <laughs> tell me. Uh, but I am a rep for windowcleaner.com, so please do let me put your orders in. I would love absolutely nothing more than that. Please um, shoot me a text. Call me 862-312-2026. That's my cell phone. Uh, call me, text me, any and all of that. Uh, I would love to put your orders in. It costs you nothing extra and you're doing me an absolute solid. You 
are awesome for doing that. Uh, also, uh, get the subscription. American Window Cleaner Magazine, awcmag.com. Get the subscription. It's 29 bucks. Do it. And I have to say thank you to everybody who's watching, listening. If it's your first time or not, it doesn't matter. Thank you so very, 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 very much. Uh, until next week, think about what you like, what you don't like. Change the things you don't like. But more importantly, go out there and be happy.